Good evening, everyone. This is your host, J.R. Michael, with another episode of Make That Bloody Movie With Coffee. And tonight's episode, we're going to be talking about five keys to improve your short films. Ladies and gentlemen, in this podcast with the five keys of making your short film, we will be going into tips on how to improve a short film, how to make it more cinematic, how to make it more um, interesting and engaging with as, a, as upcoming filmmakers and all you guys out there. There's always room to learn new things. So in this episode, my overview, I'll be talking about diving into five essential tips for filmmakers looking to take their short film to the next level from strong storytelling techniques to maximizing production value on a budget. We'll break down core elements that transform a good short film into a great short film. Whether you're an aspiring filmmaker or you're looking to redefine your craft, you know, uh, these insights will help you create more of an impactful, engaging films. Um, hopefully it'll help somebody out there uh, also as well. I mean, you know, there's so many channels that talk about how to improve, you know, filmmaking and what's great and what's not, you know, it's not one size fit all. I think, um, we all have to, um, understand that there's always something to learn and to share with one another. So that's what I'm sharing with you guys tonight. Hopefully it helps someone along the way. Um, so let's dive right into it. And by the way, um, stay till the end of the show. You get to know what the coffee of the night is like in cup, you know, um, I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in on what flavors I'm drinking. All right, let's dive into it. The power of storytelling. Um, why storytelling in a short film is so important? Um, because as you can see, Hollywood has uh, focused on the special effects, the, um, the action, which is good. Action is good, definitely. And the engaging part of it. But they don't really focus on the story. And I think a lot of people want to be told the story. They want to come into the movie. They want to feel that story. They want to feel that emotion. And it's kind of like being a kid when your parents read you your story at night, at bedtime. You get all excited. You get in your PJs. You have your hot chocolate next to your bed. And you want to hear your mom or your dad or your grandmother read you a story. And you get into the story and you start to imagine and be like you're one of the characters and you're getting in there and you're feeling it. And that's what I think we stepped away from storytelling and i think it's it's kind of sad because you know we're missing pieces to the puzzle and i believe it's very important to storytell so to get right into it why storytelling is crucial in a short film um storytelling is the foundation of any film um it's even more important because you have limited time to captivate your audience in that time span um every scene every character a uh, line of dialogue needs to be served with a purpose. You have to have purpose which every scene and every dialogue because y you only have a certain amount of time that you got to execute and get it in there. And it's, it's not easy, but it can be done with practice and repetition. You know, dialogues need to be served very well. The story must be concise, but emotional. Um, emotion is power. In, in storytelling, you know, um, you want your audience to feel sad. You want at times your audience to feel happy. You want at times your audience to kind of wonder what's around the corner. What am I going to see? What, what's going to happen to me? You know, that intense anxiety where they want to get through the scene to know where the character or the villain is going to come out. So, um, emotion is very important when storytelling. Also, uh, a strong narrative ensures that the audience stays engaged and can walk away with something to remember from your story, from your film. It has to be, and a lot of times we think that every scene has to have that. No, it could be one or two or possibly three scenes to captivate the audience. And nine times out of ten, usually that was, that's what happened. It'll be one or two people who say, oh, so-and-so did this and this happened and that happened. It was really good, really intense. It really hit me. You know, like when Rocky, for example, Rocky, um, Rocky won, you know, how he, he stuck it out in the rounds and they called it a draw. And then Rocky two, he, he said to Apollo, you know, I, I could take you on. And then he, Apollo said, yeah, right. He got lucky, lucky chump. And then he came back and he fought, you know, 
and he was pounding in his chest. You know, that, that scene really captivated me and motivated me. And um, it left that impression in my mind that, you know, an underdog can become the dog, you know, and that's that's pretty much what, what, what I'm saying here is that you, you, you want to leave, you want your story to have those moments, those moments of, I remember you. And I think that's very important. So <clears throat> I'll give you an example. What would be a good story, a short film? Um, it's called The Neighbors, Neighbors Window, actually, which won in 2020 an Oscar for Best Live Action short film. It tells simply about a profound story about human connection in just a few minutes. Its power comes from a relatable premise and emotional resonating moments that unfold naturally without feeling rushed. So pretty much in that film, you, 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 the story pulls you in, captivates you, hits you with the emotion, takes you out of the story, and then you walk away feeling something. How powerful is that? Yeah. That feels good, right? You can feel it, right? Exactly. So that's an example of a great storytelling for a short film. Now, we're talking about short film here. We're not talking about features. Features is a different animal. And tips for improving storytelling in your short film. You focus on one central conflict of the theme. And since time is limited, don't try to pack too many in. Uh, create characters with clear motivations and challenges. And even if they're backstory isn't fully fleshed out throughout the, the story the audience should quickly understand what drives them what moves them what gets them to through the story and to get to get to resolution of the story like what's what is what is he going to solve or what is she going to she's trying to accomplish uh consider starting your story in the middle of the action you know this approach immediately immediately hooks the viewers and let them place them together the context as the film progresses you know to maximizing production value on a budget now this is where it gets tricky because you know we sit here and we try to figure out how much this is going to cost that's going to cost sometimes you go over budget sometimes you go under budget you know and that's this is this part of storytelling not storytelling but productions of short films it can be a little tricky but um uh, you know, like I said, you, you sometimes you're going to hit right on the money. Sometimes you're going to miss. So how can filmmakers and their short films look professional without a big budget? Okay, here's here's my tip. Now, yeah, everybody has their own ideas, but this is one I want to share with you guys. Filmmaking on a budget can be very challenging, but it's also forces creativity. High production value doesn't necessarily mean expensive gear. Uh, it's about making smart choices with the resources you have. A clean well lit shot on an iPhone can sometimes look better than a poorly lit shot on a professional camera. See, a lot of people think that you gotta go with a high budget $22,000 camera. And I've seen cameras that are cost way less than that shoot just like a $22,000 camera. And that's where some filmmakers who, you know, they debate on that but i think it's a personal preference you know but it, this is just an idea to show you that don't limit yourself to just oh i got to get a twenty-two thousand dollar camera to make an awesome film no that's not true you can with the technology today and i and i feel like i'm beating a dead horse with this but with the technology today you can make a good film as long as you have a great story and you you show it you show it on the film. You show every shot telling your story. It's just as good as a blockbuster movie, believe it. In today's world, you know, actually, when you think about it in a whole, the story really is what makes or breaks a movie. So, and how you show it on camera, you know. So, never think that you know you need a twenty-two thousand dollar camera to make a great movie. That's bullshit. Uh, practical tips. For enhancing production value, uh, using natural lighting, shooting outdoors, and this is something I did do with a with a colleague of mine. Uh, shout out to Ray Acevedo from Menudos. We worked on a project together called Nightfall, and we are still working on the project Nightfall. So, 2025 is going to be the year where Nightfall actually will come out. So, stay tuned for that. 
Um, yeah, so we, uh, natural lighting, shooting outdoors near large window gives you an excellent light for free. Avoid harsh sunlight uh, by filming during the golden hour for soft cinematic light. And believe it or not, I shot with my partner, Ray, in the golden hour. And I have to say, it's been, like, amazing some of the shots you can get when you shoot around that time. Scout interesting locations. That's another one. Rather than renting a studio, use real-world location that fit your story. Local parks, public libraries, or even friends' homes can serve as, as great sets. Believe it or not, you know, I know today with technology, you can use green screen. And, and don't get me wrong. I mean, all the tools out there works. It all depends on what you're trying to convey in your story and using what tool when it's appropriate and when it makes sense. So think of it like you have a toolbox and you got a hammer, screw, a uh, Phillips screwdriver, a flat screwdriver, and a wrench. You're not going to use a nail with a wrench. So you're going to use a hammer, right? So you got to look at your story, look at your production, and figure out when you need to use green screen, when you don't need to use green screen, when you're supposed to post special effects, when you're not supposed to post special effects, that's what I'm saying here. So I use the metaphor to toolbox. So, uh, yeah. professional Using professional sound recording to create high-quality visual striking film on a shoestring budget, you also got to do that. Usually success is proven through creativity, not money, and often determines your production value. A lot of times when you use your creative ideas and creative inspiration to make your movie, you'd be surprised that with some of your creativity, you can actually make your film look better. And it's not necessarily about money. Because I've seen productions that have money and their, sh their film is shit. So uh, let's move on to tip number three. Visual storytelling. Show, don't tell. And that's something I was talking about earlier. In, in, the, in a medium like film, visually, are you primarily a tool for conveying emotions, themes, and characters' arc? You know, relying on too heavily on dialogue can make a short film feel constrained, which is true, and uncinematic. Instead, use composition, color, movements, and symbolism to communicate deeper meaning without saying a word. And the old cliche is, less is better. So how can a filmmaker enhance his vis visual storytelling? Use symbolism and metaphors, obviously. Visual elements can represent deeper themes. For example, in a short film, Cargo, that's one film, short film. A father's journey with his infant during a zombie apocalypse is a powerful metaphor for parental sacrifice. Look at that. Play with the color th schemes. I always believe in that, color schemes. Different colors invoke different emotions, which is so true. Uh, warm tones can convey comfort, while cooler tones may indicate isolation or detachment from everybody around you. Color grading and post-production can dramatically enhance the mood of your film. Vary your camera angles. Low angles can make a character appear dominant or powerful, while high angles can make them seem vulnerable. Think about how each shot adds to the story, not just what looks cool, you know? It's really what you're doing here, and I, and I know we get excited when we make a film and we get a knife. I call it a money shot, and you, 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 you get in there, you take it, and you're like, oh man, this is a cool shot. I love it. Oh, wow. But you got to look at it as, is it representing your character or what's going on in the script? effectively so that when you guys see it you know what's going on that that's how we got to think when we're filming and it's and it's hard it's really hard because i'm very creative myself and i <laughs> when i get a shot going and i see it and it happens and i see the magic takes place i just i, love that. I get distracted for example of visual storytelling i'll give you an example that's powerful uh pixar's la luna is a perfect example of storytelling through visuals and in this short, a young boy learns his family trade of cleaning the moon. And the film uses stunning animation, facial expressions, lighting to convey the emotions of the journey without dialogue. 
and that's that's how you got to look at stuff, you know. And and I'm not saying it's easy. Believe me, it's not easy. It takes a lot of practice and repetition and mistakes and not making your coffee right and not putting sugar and not stirring the coffee the right way. You know, that's a metaphor I'm using for this, you know, as well. Uh, as you guys can see, I love coffee. Um, okay, let's move on to tip number four. And I won't keep you long. The importance of collaboration. Why is collaboration so essential for filmmaking? Why collaboration is? Well, let's look at it in different ways. Um, when you play on a team, yes, there's either one star or two stars. But there's five players on the court, right? And they all collaborate to do what? Win a game. And in order to get to the championship, the whole bench you got to work together to get that championship. I don't care how many rings Michael Jordan have. I don't care. He couldn't do it alone. He needed his team to work together to collaborate in order to win a championship. And that's the same thing here. When you collaborate with people, when you find your team, and your team can work with you and understand you, and, and, and you understand them, and you have this synergy, the sky's the limit. You're going to make magic happen. Because that once that energy starts flowing and that synchronicity starts going, you're going to start to see things pop like popcorn. And boom, the magic starts to happen. And that's why collaboration is so important. Here it is. Filmmakers inherently collaborative. While you might have a strong vision as a director or writer, your film will be much stronger when you work with other talented individuals. A good cinematographer can bring your vision to life through the lens. A skilled sound designer can elevate the emotional impact of your film. And a talented editor can redefine your story into its best version of what you're conveying to the audience. So watch. Do you see how all of this coincides with each other like boom 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 and that's what it means to collaborate you know a lot of a lot of, everybody wants to be the, the in the spotlight but what they don't understand is you will be once you collaborate and you have a finished product the stars will come out the ones who shine will shine but when you see a beautiful work that collectively you do I don't know what you guys get, but I get so inspired and so excited when I see a team come together and they work together and it, and it, and it just happens. Oh, man, it's it's the best thing ever. I, it's like a kid in Christmas time when getting the gift he wants and Santa says, yeah, you could get it. You know, you've been good, not naughty. <laughs> How can a filmmaker find and work with a good team? Here, that's that's a complicated one, but you know I believe it takes time, but it can happen. Networking with local filmmakers, attend film festivals, join online filmmakers group, or reach out to local film schools to meet others who share your passion. This I love. You know, going to college colleges or you know high school, eh, maybe you know, and having students work with you that are passionate about films, and you'd be surprised. Some of them actually work very well and often people are willing to collaborate on short film to gain experience or, and to build their portfolio remember it's a track record that's what you want you want a track record respect everyone's creative input while it's your film collaboration works best when you respect the expertise of your team remember it's not about what you know it's about what you know collectively and I think a lot of times, you know, we come around thinking we know everything. Well, if you know everything, then you wouldn't need a team to make a movie. So remember that. We don't know everything. We think we do, but we don't. And that's when I realize when a person acts like they know everything, they're really stupid because you're limiting yourself from the knowledge that you can obtain when you're open-minded to understand that, hey, I don't know everything, but I want to learn from you. I don't care what you think of me. I want to learn. That's a smart person. Allow your cinematography editor or sound design to contribute the ideas that, that can elevate your project. It's always good to brainstorm with your team because in a basketball team, you brainstorm 
to come up with good plays, effective plays that can dismantle the other team, can get you more points on the board, and you can win the game effectively and strategically. And I think that's the same thing with, with film, filmmaking, is having a great team to effectively work together, coincide with each other, come up with great ideas, and what could enhance the project. So when it goes out into the market and you guys watch this film, you can say, oh my God, that's a great film. I want to see it turn into a feature. That's what I'm talking about. So for example, of a successful collaboration, Christopher Nolan, we all know who that is, one of the greatest, uh, worked with cinematographers like Willie, uh, I'm, I'm going to butcher this guy's name, sorry, Feister is a great example of creative co collaboration. Their partnership, especially in the films like in this Inception and The Dark Knight, shows how two creative minds can push the boundaries and create visual, groundbreaking films. And that's a collaborative effort. You know, everybody looks at Christopher Nolan. I'm not saying he's not a great director. He's an awesome director. But the fact that he had a team. You see, the funny thing is, when you work in a team, eventually, out of the team, talent will come out. Remember, a light bulb can't shine if it doesn't have its socket in order to give it the power. And the socket can't work if it doesn't have the electrical current. So that's three components. So with those three components, you have a team. And with those teams working together, put it on silent, uh, that's what get the juices going. So in here, when Christopher Nolan worked with that, with that gentleman, Wally Feister, they made awesome movies. And that's a collaboration. Uh, very basic, very simple. Now for our last tip of the night, the art of tight editing and sharp pacing. And why is editing so important in a short film? Okay, Editing can be make or break a short film. Since time is limited, every frame needs to serve a purpose. Tight editing ensures that there's no unnecessary fluff and sharp pacing keeps the audience engaged from start to finish. Tips for improving editing and pacing. Cut unnecessary scenes out. If a scene doesn't move the plot forward or add emotional depth, get rid of it. Consider removing, even if it's a beautiful shot scene. Who cares? I know, trust me, I know it hurts. There's some, we, we look at our, our product, we look at our film and we say we love all our shots. But there's some shoes Using a metaphor, you got to take out of the closet. Sorry, it can disrupt the pace if it doesn't serve the story. So you want to keep that going. You want to keep that. It's like music. You, you have a beat. You have a hook. You, when we listen to music, we like the music to keep us going, right? Feel the rhythm. Feel the rhythm. Same thing with a movie. Feel the rhythm. Feel the rhythm. Keep it going. Use cross cutting to build tension. Okay. In films with multiple storylines or parallel action, cross cutting between Different scenes can create a sense of urgency and momentum. Uh, rhythm and timing. The rhythm of cuts. When you cut between shots, it can invoke different emotions. Fast-paced cuts can create tensions and excitement. While slower transitions allow for emotional depth and feeling to go deeper into your subconscious mind. So for an example of good editing for a short film. Whiplash is an original short film before becoming a feature. A master class in editing, the film's tension is built through tight cuts between the musician's performance and his teacher's reactions. So the editing reflects the emotion intensity of the story, which makes each scene feel taunt and purposeful. So each scene that you're looking there you're seeing the emotions and the reactions of it, but it's engaging you and you're feeling it. And you're like, whoa, when I'm in this conversation and I can feel this conversation. And it's like, wow, like I'm feeling the characters, the dynamics between the two of them. That's what this edit, the sample film is talking about. So here we are at the end of our five tips. Well, Hopefully, I didn't keep you guys for too long, but what I want to do with the closing segment, I didn't forget about the coffee of the night. Let me just get through this. Um, 
Q and A. I want you guys out there when you see this podcast, this segment. I want you to give me your feedback. I want you to give me your input about what I talked about tonight. How do I find good actors for my short film on a budget? I want your opinions. I want you to tell me in your way how can you find good actors for your film. Uh, another question: What is the best way to distribute your short film? Give me your answer in the comments below, and I can shout you guys out, and we could go through it. Also, call to action. Uh, I encourage you listeners to share their, your experiences and challenges when making a short film, your production or social media. Like what I'm trying to say is, um, I just want to know your challenges, what you guys go through when you make a short film. Um, do you use social media to promote your film? Are you using podcasts, hashtags to promote your films, uh, submitting your short films to film festivals? Um, are you putting it out there for people to see like a preview and then get Q&A to know what to change, what to fix? Um, give me your ideas on what you do or what experiences you have in making a short film. All right, everyone. I think that's pretty much it for tonight's uh, episode of Make That Bloody Movie With Coffee with your host, J.R. Michael, um, and five key tips to improve your short films in 2024. Oh, yeah. And the coffee of the night I'm having is Americano iced coffee with a little bit of sugar and cream. Well, everyone, thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for hearing my thoughts. Hopefully, some. Hopefully this uh, episode will help someone out there who's looking for answers. And I'm just glad to share with you guys. Always remember, peace, love, and happiness. And united we stand and divided we fall. Never forget that. All right. Signing out, guys. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.